Not since Greg Norman's heyday has Australian golf been on such a high. In the 12 months since Adam Scott slipped on the green jacket, Australians have won six PGA Tour titles. And a new Aussie star was born at the Masters, with amateur Oliver Goss making the cut at Augusta. Mark Leishman, Jason Day and Adam are genuine sporting stars down under, and the PGA Tour of Australasia is riding that wave of enthusiasm in the great southern land. It's just been incredible. They, uh, they made such a difference to, uh, to the crowds, to the, to the television ratings, the atmosphere. Everybody's seeing that uh, people are coming out and watching. They're turning on their televisions at home, and, and that just inspires confidence amongst broadcasters and sponsors and even government officials who have been supporting these events are thrilled with the success today. As the fan base has grown, so too has the number of events on the PGA Tour of Australasia. We had a new tournament uh, last year in Perth and, uh, and this coming year we've got the Fiji International starting up. Uh, we're seeing New Zealand PGA now, the New Zealand Open, growing stronger and stronger. So the tour has been uh, kicking some goals. I think by the end of Fiji International, we'll have almost doubled our prize money in three years, which is great. That's why we're here. That's what our members expect us to do. But uh, Fiji International is really exciting. It's a wonderful course, Nanadola Bay. Fiji is a beautiful country, and uh, the, uh, the players I've spoken to are just uh, really looking forward to it. The extra popularity means more overseas players are also making their way down under, which adds to the tour's appeal. The PGA Tour of Australasia operates in the November window, where global golf stars are attracting appearance fees in Asia and the Middle East. It's about scheduling to try and avoid overlaps wherever possible. It's just communicating, really, so we know where everybody's coming from. Everybody wants to see developments in other parts of the world. Australasia has historically you know, given great quality players into the world talent pool, if you will. Um, but we want to see you know, more players coming out of China, particularly, and that's a good reason why the US Tour is backing that developmental tour, PGA Tour China, hopefully so that we see more Chinese players coming through. It's a massive market and it needs to have a, a, a commensurate group of high quality players. The PGA Tour of Australasia isn't just focused on harnessing Asian golf stars, but Asian golf fans. We've got to remember our lot in life, and, and these events aren't uh, going to get massive ratings in, in the US. So our focus is primarily on Asia, on making sure that the, um, the One Asia Tour grows, that our events are broadcast strongly both in into Asia and, of course, our own markets of Australasia, Australia and New Zealand. So we've got wide distribution arrangements for our tournaments to go into Europe and Asia and the Middle East and certainly the United States. And it's great that they go in there at prime time, but it's not a primary market that we're chasing. And while the PGA Tour of Australasia has a global view, Brian's team know they also need to fit into the complex Australian sporting landscape. Well, what's important is scheduling events so that they're good for broadcasters, so that people will watch them. They don't compete with uh, other events. They're attractive for the best players to come out, and they're played at a time when the courses are in peak condition. So, you know, coming out of winter in that kind of October, November window, in Australia, we've got rugby league and AFL done and dusted. There's a bit of competition from V8s and crickets coming around the corner. But uh, by and large, we find it to be a pretty good window. Uh, and it's also attractive for the players who are overseas to come home and, uh, and visit their folk. With Australian pros winning around the world and the Australian tour going from strength to strength, there remains a hope of a world tour as championed by the great white shark. Well, look, I mean, we've talked about that from time to time. I think Greg Norman was the original proponent of the world tour idea some years ago. Uh, it's not at the top of the PGA Tour's wish list at the moment. They're fairly US-centric. Um, but they certainly you know, want to coordinate, as do the other tours with each other, to make sure there's a sensible kind of rotation, sensible scheduling, so that the Europeans, when they come into China, aren't up against the Americans and aren't up against One Asia. So I, I can't see a world tour getting some momentum in the next year or two, but uh, I can see just continuing um, collaboration and cooperation between all the tours to try and maximise the, uh, you know, the global tournament space.